Hello, and welcome back to Warland 3. On the last episode, we got three kind of shoddy instruments together, to be honest. Like, seriously, like, we got a horn instrument made out of, well, horn, but we also got, like, a horn, the instrument horn, made out of scales, which seems kind of, like, a little unnecessary, and, like, like unless you stuck them together real well, like, and made a horn, sh it, 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 it seems... Like, a not great idea. We got three dubious instruments together and did the thing that happens when you get three dubious instruments together, which forms a laser, which hits a volcano, which makes it erupt, which makes big rocks fly out and hit the eastern part of the world, making a big hole that you can explore, but we'll do that later because right now we're going to explore the western hole, which isn't a hole, but actually a crater in the volcano, but only the western part because, whew, wh why would you expect to get more than the western part from from that? Like, you, everybody knows when you interact with three instruments, you get the western part of a volcano and nothing more than that. Um, so there are silk ball blocks in this um, volcano, which is kind of interesting. We will have to interact with, you guessed it, fire at some point, uh, as you can tell by these fire robots. Um, but for now, we're more interested in finding a silk ball and the things that make you become silk. Um, so we're gonna do that, and you can do that by exploring this little, like, breakable wall segment, uh, which has a nice little tell by, like, you're going to need to break the silk ball block, so you're probably looking around for a silk worm, and you won't find one anywhere. Um, and then there's a kind of a decent tell that, you know, first off, you know, you're not finding anything, you're gonna look around. Um, a decent tell. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the silk ball from, or the silk ball block from the other side. Um, but there is a little divot in the wall, and you can go up and, you know, break the cubby. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a decent tell that, you know, you know you need to be looking for something, and you probably have a general idea that, hey, this cubby is suspicious, I should check it out. Um, so it's kind of a, a nice little tell. Um, also, I love all the enemies in this volcano, because, like, I know, it's, it's a video game level, so of course there's enemies in it. But, like, minutes ago, this volcano, like, was sealed off, so either these enemies have always lived inside of this volcano, which is insane, or the other more insane thing, these idiots saw, oh, hey, that volcano opened up. I'm gonna go hop in there and have a good night's sleep, baby. Like, fire robot, yeah, whatever. Their element is fire. They can do whatever they want. Fire knows no laws, and neither do the robots that command it. But the spearheads, they should know better. Like, if the spearhead, actually, if the spearhead falls into fire, will they die? I'm not 100% sure, because a lot of enemies will die when they hit, um, uh, like, stage, like, hazards uh, of some degree. Uh, but the robots, like, if they were to fall into the fire, they would not die, and neither did the spearman, unless he just fell off screen. Nope, he is perfectly fine. Um, like, water destroys a lot of enemies, um, although that's probably mostly due to the fact they didn't want to program, like, water physics for the enemies and how they interact with it, so it's just like, yeah, make the water a kill screen. But it's interesting that you could just throw an enemy straight into fire, and it's just like, yeah, who, who cares? Um, you think they'd just pop a kill screen on that for them too, but hey, what are you gonna do? And what you are gonna do is vote on this YouTube poll about if this is the left eye of the Silver Serpent or the right eye, because really it's a matter of perspective. It's the left side for us, but it's the right side for- there's- there's gonna be no YouTube poll. It's the- it's the right eye. It's- this would be the Serpent's right eye. I just had to check to make sure that would be the right eye. It, it's it's the right eye. I'm I'm putting my foot down. I'm sorry. There'll be no YouTube poll today. Your your opinion will go unlistened to today. Unfortunately, I'm I'm sorry. I'm very very sorry. But you but you're gonna have to accept that you're not gonna be able to vote in one of those wonderful YouTube polls that everybody loves oh so much. Uh, but what you're gonna what you what you're gonna love is. It's time for the Elite Four! Time to check out the Colossal Hole. Uh, the other level we were granted by, um... Put, putting those conches together, making a beam. Uh, and our first thing we'll see, of, other than this crushy robot, is our friend the Owl! Our friend the Owl is back, uh, but unfortunately during the, the night, uh, he's awake and we can't interact with him because he's too busy flipping and flapping around, uh, so we're gonna have to deal with not being able to interact with him. We'll also deal with not being able to get to the, um... the key unless we come at it from the bottom, because, uh... There's no entrance from the top, and there was blocks in our way, so we're going to have to take a Numo, make us Puffy Wario, and fly back up. Uh, the Colossal Hole is kind of an interesting level. Um, I kind of like the aesthetic of like the big like kind of like hole gradient in the middle, and then when you get down to the bottom, there's this kind of like weird um, sprite you don't see anywhere else for like the rock that uh, was ejected from um, uh, the West Crater when it erupted, which is kind of nice. It's 
aesthetically a nice level. I enjoy the way it looks. It's fun. Um, although it's a bit confusing, like, these things that are, like, in the way. Like, this thing just smashed down and made, like, made this hole. And now all of a sudden there's, like, these little, like, areas just in the way. It's, it's a little weird, but whatever. And we're already done with this level. This level goes by so much faster when you know where to go. Uh, like, your first time playing this game, you'll probably just kind of, like, stumble around. Like, because there's a bunch of just, like, cubby holes you can just kind of stumble into. Like, you know, you can get smashed, become Flat Wario, and then kind of just float your way down. But if you know what you're doing, you can just jump straight to the bottom, become Puffy Wario, and just fly straight to where you need to go. And uh, we got the other eye of the serpent, whether it's left or right. Whether your opinion is correct or incorrect matters no longer, because we gathered both eyes of the Silver Serpent, which opens a door for us in the, um, the Tower of Revival, which we will now, I guess, go back to. And boy, are every single... Oh, no, no, no. I was about to say, is every single level of this episode going to be at night? But we're, we're going to do one more level after this so we can show off uh, what we get from this level, which may, may have spoiled it just a teensy, teensy bit. Um, and I think we need to light ourselves on fire again, because then this block will be back. Yeah, the block's back, so... Worry, why aren't you letting go? Normally when you hit B, he lets go of the thing. Did my controller break? Hmm. Can you... Oh, you have to... It's It's not just B. You have to hold uh, B and down. My bad. I wasn't I wasn't doing the right thing. And I was so confused there for a second. Um. So yes, let's, let's explore the Tower of Revival. And I'm not going to... The Tower of Revival can be kind of like an annoying level to traverse. Like if we had to go back to where we were last time, that could, that could take a little while. Uh, but luckily for us, we are... <clears throat> Our destination isn't too far from the beginning. So once we solve this very, very difficult uh, torch puzzle, which I'm sure has scared away many, many visitors in the past, just daunted by the the insurmountable task of how do I light all of these torches? And most of them probably didn't think to light themselves on fire. Uh, but this door was closed previously. This is where the eyes of the Silver Serpent went, opening up a new part of the Tower of Revival for us. Um, and even though there's fire for us to ignite ourselves with, we're going to ignore it for now. Because uh, as you'll see, we have fire blocks we need to break. But there are donut blocks in the way. And then there's a thin platform past that, which makes us one of one of the um, uh, arrangements that I find very, very interesting. Uh, because we are going to need to use multiple transformations, at least three, um, unless there's another one past here that I'm not thinking of. Um, we're going to need to use three to surmount this challenge. And it's kind of interesting to find a challenge that's like, oh, hey, let's compound all of our, like, transformations on top of each other and see what we can make with it. And there's a there's a red key past there, but... Oh, wait, we do need the red key. I was about to say, we don't care about the red keys. We're, we're not here to get the red key. Um, but we're going to need to hit a switch before we can uh, mess with that red key. But I honestly, off the top of my head, have no idea where the switch is. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun for everybody involved. Um, I'm not 100% sure where it is, but we'll find it one of these days. We'll, we'll just go ahead and continue on our way doing what we need to do, um, and just hope we kind of stumble our way into what we need to do on the way. And boy, that was kind of a roundabout way of saying what I wanted to. And that's kind of an interesting, like, little, like, jumping puzzle, like, we had to do, like, I mean, it's not so much a puzzle as it is a challenge, I guess, but interesting little platforming you have to do there. Since you don't have control of Hot Wario, he just kind of runs forward, and you all you can do is jump, and he'll change directions when he hits uh, where, wherever the heck he desires to go. Um, so, this area is just so interesting, because it's like, oh, you need to get to the top and become Fat Wario to do anything that you need to do, um, but along the way, you have other challenges, like, if you were to light yourself on fire, it would just be inconvenient previously to when you needed it. If you're hit by a zombie here, it would just be inconvenient. So it's a nice little, uh, case of, like, things switching quickly between being challenges and, uh, or, you know, being obstacles and being what was required, and, oh, good, we just had to come down here to hit the switch. Uh, so now we just need to backtrack. Uh, to go back up to the key once again to do what we need to do. Um, so this game makes nice use of like just a little bit of backtracking, making you do um, try challenges over and over again. It's be easy to complain about it, like oh why don't I just have more new stuff? But there are, is a lot in this game, and it, I'm not sure how much the Game Boy's memory or Game Boy Color cartridge memory this uses. Um, so it's hard to give them crap for it, and also these segments are so small that it's hard to, like, completely justify just complaining about, oh, I have to backtrack through this area. Like, if this took us an hour to do, like, yeah, I'd be like, oh, man, this sucks. But, like, what? That took us, like, 30 seconds to get back up there. Uh, and now, oh, man, I missed the jump, so now we're gonna actually have to traverse this pipe back up here to get to the, uh, zombie area, which makes us do this challenge one more time, which is a little bit annoying, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, but it's hard to complain too much about, like, very, very short segments of backtracking like this. Um, 
Especially when, honestly, I think this area is kind of well constructed, making you make use of multiple transformations and having them constantly switch between obstacle and like goal. Like, it's just kind of interesting to see them like constantly switch. It's not just like a oh, it was an obstacle, now it's good. It's an obstacle, now it's good. Then it's an obstacle again. It's it's kind of neat. It's an interesting little thing. And another interesting thing about this level is if you'll remember the great chest. Uh, the fir uh, first visit, we were given the flipper fins. I believe that was the name I gave gave them. Uh, not one hundred percent sure, but now we find what I have deemed the great garlic with an exclamation point because it was previously called garlic, which is another power up. This level gives you two power ups in a row, which is really neat. I mean, obviously not in a row since we've played levels in between them. Uh, but with the great garlic, Wario finds himself to be more powerful and can now smash through uh, crack blocks with ease. You no longer recoil and you will you can just run straight through them. It's kind of like uh, when you become uh, Bull Wario in Wario Land 1, but you can also now break uh, solid blocks. Uh, and You can also kill enemies you couldn't previously kill while rolling. You can smash uh, the solid blocks while you roll. It's just just a good all-around uh, transfer, or not transformation, power-up. Uh, kind of a nice, very, very basic lock and key mechanic, but... Still, you know, a nice little locking key. It's it's interesting. I like it. Um, I partially kind of wish more of the transform or power ups were kind of like this, where it's like they add on to your repertoire um, by giving you kind of like a new, like you know, like oh, I couldn't break these before. I don't feel neutered by that as much as I did. Like oh, I can't swim. I can't pick up enemies. I can't ground pound. I felt real neutered by not having those things. But also at the same time, it'd be lame if just like oh, now I can break you know this kind of block. Um, but hey, whatever. Uh, and for some reason, getting that transformation... Oh, that's why. It gives you access to sea turtle rocks. I couldn't remember why we get access to sea turtle rocks from that. But it turns out there was a rock in the way that Wario just just walked straight through. Like like Jason or something. Or like Superman. Like, hey, I don't care if there's a wall there. I'm just going to walk straight through that rock. But um, even though we have access to sea turtle rocks and the colossal hole, we're instead going to go to Bank of the Wild River, which may be the least climactic way to... Uh, show off our new power up, and I'm gonna gonna go ahead and apologize for that uh, because what we have access to now is we can break uh, these blocks. These are, I believe, we I tried to break break. I think I said Blake. We tried to Blake these last time we were here, um, but I believe they are solid blocks we would have no access to. And as we can see near the beginning of the level, there is a red chest. And if you remember um, this level, uh, the gray chest for it, which I don't remember if that was last episode or two episodes ago. Knowing things isn't my strong suit. It's known. Um, but the great chest for this level is go to the end of the level, then make your way back. The red chest is basically the same because, you you know, the red chest is near the beginning. You go to the end, you find the red key, and now we just need to go back. And uh, we're going to have to do the same thing we did to get back last time because our jumping ability has not been enhanced at all by our newfound strength. Wario's legs didn't get stronger. Eating garlic powers up his arms. He's, he's, a, he's a Popeye through and through. Um... Popeye's arm, arms are the only thing that gets gets good by spinach eating, right? I'm not actually 100% sure about that. It's been so long since I've seen a Popeye cartoon. Um, so yeah, this may have not been the best level to demonstrate our great garlic, but just a little taste to, to keep the tease away, because otherwise I've been like, we're stronger now, see you guys next episode. Um, so we at least got to play around with our new power-up, and also we get an interesting thing here um, that we'll talk about more in just un momento. Uh, we'll see more great garlic in the episodes to come, and you know, visit the Colossal Hole and Sea Turtle Rocks next episode, probably? Visiting Sea... Yeah, we're visiting Sea Turtle Rocks next episode. Don't worry about it. I just had to check my list. Um, but the power-up we got for that level was the Detective's Companion, previously referred to as the Magnifying Glass, but come on. That's... We, get, we gotta give things better names than that. What the Magnifying Glass lets you do is on the Overworld, if you hit B and it works, uh, it shows you, for some reason the directions you can like follow to get the levels not that there's like you know arrows already pointing that out but more importantly you can check whether you have um gotten what, what treasures you've gotten in the level so we can go oh yeah we've gotten all these which is kind of a weird ability to have to gain but i guess they had a hundred treasures that they had to get so they were like oh let's make it so you have to you know do a thing and also i wanted to come over here just to show off the eight gold coins thing and what a completed level looks like uh, so it's kind of neat. Uh, it's not the most useful thing in the world. And there's a lot of weird, like, small quality of life things you have to pick up as a treasure. Um, but hey, it's weird. Um, and that is actually the last kind of treasure we're going to pick up in this game. Because we've seen things that open up levels, things that... Have we, actually, have we seen a thing that changes a level thus far? Am I actually not 100% sure? Let me check. Uh, what have we gotten? 
Oh yeah, we, we just got a thing to change the level, duh, um, because the, um, the Eyes of the Silver Serpent opened up a door we didn't previously have access to. There are more interesting level changes we'll see throughout the course of the game. Um, oh yeah, and there was also, like, the giant's foot that we threw up in the air and it broke part of the wall. Like, let's, let's just recount the treasures before we end this episode. Um, there's things that open levels, things that open multiple levels, um, things that change levels, power-ups... Uh, music boxes, which, you know, tend to just open up levels or change things in levels, I believe. Actually, they may just open levels. Some might change things in levels. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, there's not required treasures. Then there's not required treasures that are crowns that will give us access to something later. Then there's not required treasures that give us quality of life things on the overworld map. Um, so it's kind of a nice little mix of just little treasures you can get. Um, I really enjoy when you get these little quality of life things just because, like, oh, this is neat. But it's also weird that you don't have access to it from the beginning, but it's hard to complain, like, oh, what treasures are in this level? I'll just enter it and exit the level. It takes, like, what, like, 20 seconds, 30 seconds? It's not that bad. Um, so it's nice to get a little quality of life thing like that. Um, so from here on out, disappointment, because all the treasures are just going to be the same thing over and over again. I mean, we'll see new unique treasures that do different things in different ways, but they're all going to fall into a category like that. And, oh, hey, the rock for Sea Turtle Rock came back. I wonder if that's just because we haven't played the level yet or if that just appears every single time. I do not remember. Um, but hey, that's the end of the episode. I suppose the episode ended a while ago and I was talking about something not too important. Um, in the next episode, we will explore our newfound biceptual power... Biceptual isn't a word, I'm sorry. Our biceps are good, we can break rocks. We're gonna go check out what we can do with it. See you guys next time.